Welcome to the After the Amen podcast with Miles Hester and Benjamin Lee. Miles and Benjamin preach at the West Main Church of Christ in Louisville, Texas. This podcast is a more in-depth conversation about the sermon that was preached the previous Sunday. And we are so happy that you are tuning in to study more from God's Word. So grab your Bible, get a notepad and a pencil or pen, and let's study more from the Word of God. All right. Hello and welcome to the After the Amen podcast. I am Benjamin Lee. I hope and pray all is well with you. And Miles Hester is with me as well. Miles, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Excited to get into this week's topic, this week's sermon. Uh, you preached yesterday. We're recording this on a Monday. Uh, you preached yesterday a sermon entitled, Read Your Bible. Very important title. Very good title for the sermon. But uh, you specifically talked about our Bible reading that we do here at West Main. Um, we have a reading plan that we're going through this year that uh, the elders and deacons um, put together for us. And this past week's Bible reading was in First and Second Peter. So I know a lot of your focus was on First and Second Peter. You kind of walked us through some of those books. And really the premise being, if you did the Bible reading, if you read um, First and Second Peter last week and you've been keeping up with that, mm-hmm. then a lot of life questions are going to be answered. A lot of things that people get confused on a lot and, and have been getting confused on recently maybe – um, are kind of cleared up in First and Second Peter. So it's kind of interesting how that connection kind of happens. But tell us more. Uh, tell us about, I know you had one word per chapter. Tell us more about what you um, talked about and, and why you chose to do this. Read your Bible sermon based on First and Second Peter. Yeah, First and Second Peter, great letters from the Apostle Peter. Really letters addressing Christians. If you look at First Peter chapter 1, to those who reside as aliens scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who are chosen. These Christians who have been scattered were facing a great deal of suffering. Uh, I probably should have had a word suffer uh, in one of the chapters, but suffering is mentioned, I believe, about 15 times, Miles, in 1 Peter. So my sermon was 47 minutes, but the brief summary of these words will not take that long. What we talked about, though, and really you and I have been talking about this, there's a lot of world events that are taking place. Uh, There are horrific things that are being done, um, lives being taken. Uh, There's war in Russia and Ukraine, Israel, Hamas. And so we were kind of talking about, you know, doing a sermon, looking at in times and things like that. Uh, as I was thinking more about First and Second Peter and our daily Bible reading, that's one of the big things that we all need to do, especially in times like these, because there's a lot of false teaching that's out, out there. A lot of people are assuming the world's going to come to an end, and one day it will. We don't know the day or the hour, but there are people, unfortunately, on YouTube and other platforms that are really pushing a lot of things that are just not found in the Word of God. That's where reading our Bible becomes really important. And so as I was thinking about first and second Peter, I was actually going to go to second Peter three because Peter talks about the return of Jesus. He he talks about the world being burned up one day, a new heavens and a new earth, a new economy of things that's going to take place uh, when the Lord comes back. But he's not writing that because of specifically what happened here in 2023. However, as we just do our daily Bible reading, it is interesting to see just how many topics get addressed that can help us even today. And so chapter one, we look at salvation. Chapter two, we talked about the people of God. Chapter three, we talked about love with respect to dealing with relationships. Chapter four, we talked about arming ourselves with the mind of Christ. Chapter five, we talked about uh, be alert, the devil. We have an enemy. And then in 2 Peter chapter 1, we use the word remember. That's what Peter does actually in chapter 1 and chapter 3. Chapter 2 was false because a whole chapter is devoted to false teachers, very similar to the short letter from Jude. And then chapter 3, promise. 
Uh, there were those in the first century who would mock Christians. Where is the promise of what your Lord has said? And so we looked at what Peter had to say about the promise of the return of Jesus, how he's going to return, what's going to happen, what's going to be ushered in. Okay, good. Uh, great overview. Um, yeah, there's. It's just incredible to me. There's, you know, there's so many lessons to be learned from First and Second Peter. Like you said, just kind of taking it chapter by chapter and going through some of these things. Uh, like you said, like we've talked about before, um, when we weren't recording, just thinking about some things that are going on in the world, some suffering that's going on in the world. That's interesting. I, I hadn't heard that um, statistic or that number about how many times the word suffering is used. But you obviously see a lot about suffering in in First and Second Peter, but the you know, the whole premise is, um, you know, the suffering is going to be worth it because of who we are, because of the salvation that we have and what Christ has done in us. Um, uh, one question I wanted to ask along the lines of reading your Bible, and and I think you kind of answer it in this sermon and with how this sermon is laid out, but I think sometimes people have a tendency, and I know I've been here too, where if I'm presented with a problem, whether that's a spiritual thing I have a question about or something that's going on in my life or a doctrine that I hear or something. I think I want to know what the Bible says about that. And obviously there's a time and place for that. Um, You know, we want to know what the Bible says on certain topics, but if I'm, let's just say I'm just starting out and I maybe don't know much about the Bible. I don't really know what the Bible says about anything. Um, I know some biblical topics, but what advice would you give a person who maybe, you know, has some specific question, but really just says, okay, I want to read my Bible, but, you know, where do I start? What do I read? Um, what do I do if I don't understand it? Um, how, ca- how can just reading my Bible arm me with the answers um, I, I, I'm looking for? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so a couple of thoughts. You know, you could do you could go really broad with this qu- question or kind of narrow mm-hmm. it down. One thing I will encourage people as I think more about this. Uh I was asked a question Friday. Uh, I had a podcast recording um uh, upon their shoulders and one of the questions was if you only had 15 minutes with someone, mm-hmm. you know, what would you want to share with them? Uh, I was like, "Oh, that's that's a really great question." Sometimes we can make something simple too complicated. Mm -hmm. The first thing I want people to do is certainly to read. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If a person decided to start in Genesis, they're going to learn a lot of truth. Now, in the process of time, they do have to understand things along the way. The old covenant, the new covenant, um, where salvation is found and things like that. But if someone is reading the Bible and um, just in God's word, I think that's always a great thing. Now, there has to be balance and context and things like that, that Mm -hmm. a person can learn or needs to learn. If I were to direct someone, you know, I want them to know who Jesus is, obviously. And going to one of the Gospels is always one of the best places to begin, whether it's the Gospel of Mark or the Gospel of Luke, but any of the Gospels are going to be sufficient. And so, you know, one of the challenges we have today is that people just aren't reading the Bible. And I could, I believe I can say we're not reading the Bible enough. Um, People sometimes want an absolute, give me a certain amount of time that I need to read every day. Um, Or, you know, what's, you know, am I doing enough? Well, if we believe this is the very word of God, and we can hear from God, then there should always be an inclination or a desire to do that. And I will admit there are things that do get in the way. Um, Schedules get in the way. Feeling like we know enough gets in the way. Pride gets in the way. Sin gets in the way. We feel guilty sometimes when we start reading the Bible. Uh, when We know we're sinning. Well, that's even more reason for us to go back to God's Word. Uh, We have these great precious promises. So. I want people to be in the Word of God. Um, I want people to explore the Bible. Um, Read the book of Proverbs. 
There's great wisdom, obviously, there. Read the book of Ecclesiastes. It's about life. You know, depending on where a person is to Mao's, uh, a, a different answer could be given. Um, with your Bible knowledge, you know, I may do something different if I were to give you guidance or thoughts or things like that, because you, you have a, a much bigger base and foundation than a lot of other people compared to someone who maybe has never read the Bible or who is a young person. You see what I mean? Uh -huh. So sometimes we may want like the exact answer. Um, but I, I think about Philip in Acts chapter eight, he started where the eunuch was uh -huh. at that very scripture. We talked about that in our Bible class. Right. He started in Isaiah chapter 53. That's where he started. The, uh -huh. uh, the, the disciples in Berea, in Acts 17 and verse number 11, they started with what Paul was sharing with them. They searched the scriptures daily to see whether those things were so. Aquila and Priscilla, I was going to say Ananias and Sapphira, but Aquila and Priscilla, it's an inside joke. Oh. They started where Apollos was. They started at the baptism of John. He needed to know that baptism is expired. It's out of date. In mm -hmm. Acts 19, Paul started with those 12 disciples in Ephesus with baptism, with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So they already had some truth established. And so it, it depends sometimes on where a person may be. So that's how I would answer that question. You know, yeah, that's a really good answer. And, and I think, you know, going back to the Bible class that we were talking about, one of the things... Uh, I mentioned in that class was, and probably just because I preached on this a few months ago, and I'm about to preach on this again. But in Acts 17, when um, Paul's talking at Mars Hill, and he he sees this inscription to the unknown God, he starts where they are, and even in the way he's arguing for the existence of God, and his whole approach there is kind of defined by, um, you know, seeing that that altar and seeing that inscription and starting there. So I think even, you know, in our society, you know, if, if, if sometimes I, I know for me, uh, a lot of my friends in high school were either atheist or agnostic. Uh, and I think sometimes that kind of intimidated me to where I was like, well, I don't, you know, if I ask them for a Bible study, they're not going to care. Like they're not, you know, because they don't believe in the Bible or they don't believe in God or whatever. But I think that, you know, Acts 17 is almost like an answer to that where it's like, you know, I even if you were to read Acts 17 with someone, it's like he's talking to people who don't believe, but Paul's talking to people who don't believe in the same God he does, but he still, you know, starts with what he says. So even if you were to just share it with someone who doesn't read their Bible, who maybe doesn't even believe the Bible, just say you know, well, bear with me for a second and read what, read what Paul says to people who like, this is for those that, you know, don't believe in God or aren't starting in the same place. Maybe we're starting from. So there's something in there for everyone also. And I think another thing too, that I was thinking about as you were uh, talking just now is I think sometimes we can also be surprised by how applicable different sections of scripture can be you know we think of maybe sometimes we think of like the old testament or um I, I don't know maybe think of like leviticus or a specific book or a specific something that's like oh well that doesn't really have any maybe that we think that doesn't have anything for me or that's not really about my situation or different things like that and you know but there's really so much more to learn from you know, all, all these chapters, like you said, you know, writing this first and second Peter sermon, you started kind of thinking some things about like some misconceptions people have about the end times and some of the wars that are going on and things like that. But, you know, first and second Peter answer a lot more questions than just thinking about Jesus coming back and some of those things. And I think too, you know, having talked to more mature Christians, than myself you know at times they'll i've heard several older christians say things like you know i read this specific verse when i was in this specific scenario when i was younger maybe but you know as i got older or when i was in a different scenario i read it again and i got something else. either got something new or maybe it just didn't really like impact me 
the same way. But then I read another verse that I had read a million times, but because of this new scenario I'm in or this new person I'm studying with or whatever I'm bringing to the table now, um, you know, then th those things kind of impact me differently. But again, just if, if I wasn't in the word, then I wouldn't be able to reap the benefits of of being in the word. And, you know, if I'm, mm -hmm. if I'm just reading my Bible every day and following those habits, then, you know, I, I might not think, oh, I really need to read first Peter today, but thinking about my life and things that are going on as I'm reading through first Peter, it's like, oh, like this is, you know, this is, this is crazy. This is exactly what I needed. Um, and that, I think that will happen maybe a lot more than, than people would expect it to. So. Yeah, you know, um, that's exactly right. And one of the things that we'll have to get to a point of, of, of doing is reading God's word so much. It's, and it may have come across that way. I can't talk about every single thing in each sermon, neither can you, but obviously we want to read and we want to apply. So we want to be hearers and we also want to be doers. So I, I have to assume we all understand that to be the case. But reading is so fundamental. I remember the Urbana Free Library in Urbana, Illinois, I used to go to when I was younger. And it, I think that was one of the slogans, reading is fundamental. It's so hmm. true even today. Everyone knows that the competition is for our mind. It's for our minds. That's why Facebook does what it does. Instagram does what it does. Same company. TikTok does what it does. Commercials do what they do. Netflix does what it does. We all know it's a competition for attention. If we understand that to be the truth, then we also know we got to stay engaged. There's a reason why Peter is writing in 2 Peter chapter 1, I am writing to stir you up. We all have to be stirred up as a way of reminder. So we can never we should never feel guilty about encouraging one another. Have you have you been reading your Bible? It's not, you know, it's not a guilt trip or anything like that. It's it's a reminder. I need to be reading God's word. And there are 66 books in this Bible. It's awesome in his mm -hmm. word. And it it's it's it will never get stale. It will never get boring. When we find those moments and pockets when it does, that's a me problem. There's mm -hmm. something going on that I need to figure out. Am I tired? Uh, am I? Am, am, there's something I need to address. Uh, what's happening here? There are so many different ways to study. So, like what we're doing in the Book of Acts, we're looking at the the, the trips right now of Paul. What a great study! Of uh, man, that was so much work on just one missionary trip. Okay, how did he interact with churches during that time? Uh, mm -hmm. How did they resolve conflict? What was conflict re uh, resolution? What did that look like? Proverbs. That's a great place to do topical studies. What do the Proverbs teach me about money? What do the Proverbs teach me about sex? What do the Proverbs teach me about speech? What do the Proverbs teach me about just whatever that subject may be? You're probably going to find it in Proverbs, mm -hmm. right? Song of Solomon. Think about that for our relationships. The war stories all throughout the Old Testament. I, I did a podcast and, and talked to a buddy of mine uh, with the story of Hushai and King David, the first secret agent, uh, Hushai, the archite. Uh, there's just, the stories right. are endless. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. But if we don't view the Bible that way and even help members see the Bible that way, Miles, that mm -hmm. oh, this isn't a boring book. Oh, I got to read my Bible again. When will it end? There's not a finish line. Mm. <laughs> right. We're being transformed. Our minds have to be renewed every day. So we're not conformed to the world. And so if our minds are going to be on things above, then, then we have to be filling our minds with things from above, wisdom from above, God's word. And, and so, you know, one of the things we're going to do next year is read the entire Bible in a year. I think it's going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. and go, through, go through the entire Bible. And I'll say this, just, you know, with you being the preacher development program, and really for the both of us, all of our sermons are going to be found in that Bible reading. 
We could do a sermon every week from the Bible reading. Right. And that's a way to preach through the entire Bible. Mm -hmm. That would be a great idea where you could mm -hmm. preach through the entire Bible in a year. Right. You can draw a sermon every week from God's word and it mm -hmm. will just cover so many different discussions and topics. Right. And so we got to be in the word of God. Peter is not holding back and saying, well, I understand that you guys are suffering right now. And by the way, you know, if you look at certain examples, like in first Peter chapter one, let me give you a couple of examples here, Miles. In first mm -hmm. Peter one and verse six, in this, you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. So you see there, he's talking about suffering mm -hmm. there. Um, mm -hmm. You go over in, in chapter in chapter two, uh, in verse number 20, for what credit is there if when you sin and are harshly treated, you endure it with patience. But if when you do what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure it, this finds favor with God. Verse 21, you've been called for this purpose since Christ also suffered for you. Verse 23, he talks more again about the suffering of Christ. Look at chapter 3 and verse 14. But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness. Chapter 4 and verse number 1. Therefore, since Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same purpose, because he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. I actually skipped one in chapter 3 as well. Read the second half of chapter 4. If anyone suffers as a Christian, share in the sufferings of Christ. Verse 12, don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal. Now, chapter 5 has examples. Now, what I'm doing, Miles, I am just simply rehearsing Bible marking that I did years ago. Mm -hmm. See, that's another way to read your Bible, where I read my Bible. I'm not bragging, but I read my Bible, and I did markings, and I looked at, okay, let's see these different themes, and that still is serving me and helping me today. So it's a great example of, here's another way to read your Bible. Get some colored pencils mm -hmm. and start circling or underlining or highlighting things. That's a fun thing to do. And it's an investment for yourself years down the road. But notice what Peter did not do. He didn't say, well, I understand you're going through a lot right now. It's okay if you take some time off. It's so hard right. reading the Bible. It mm -hmm. takes so much bandwidth, so much energy. Yeah, you know, it's easier to watch that three-hour NFL game. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. Or the Houston Astros or the Texas Rangers. Go Rangers, <laughs> by the way. But it takes, you know, it takes so much energy. But I, I get it. It's just too hard to read God's Word. No, that's exactly what we need in the middle of suffering. Right. Yeah. Reminder. Mm -hmm. So we got to lay aside the Word of God when we find ourselves hesitant or not really that interested, why is that? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this question, Miles. We got to wrap up here in a minute. Go back, you know, for those who are listening, go back and read First and Second Peter. Do some Bible marking. We're mm -hmm. starting in the Gospel of John, John 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, chapters 1 through 5. That'd be a great sermon this week, Miles. Mm -hmm. uh, and I already got a sermon I'm working on, all right? But yeah. Seeing through the blur, that's the title of my sermon, Seeing Through the Blur. But you read John 1 through 5, ask yourself as you're reading the, these chapters, who is Jesus? Chapter mm -hmm. 1, he's the Word, he's God, he's light, he's creator, he's the Lamb of God. Chapter 2, he's the resurrection, destroy this temple in three days, I will build it up. He's a miracle worker, right? Chapter three, he's the savior of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Chapter four, who is Jesus? He's the one that has eternal life, mm -hmm. living waters. Chapter five, who is Jesus? He, he, he says that he is equal with the father. Right. Father and I have been working. If you do not honor me as the son, you, you also are not honoring God. He mm -hmm. is judge in John chapter five. 
So, you know, we can just read through this and get so comfortable with understanding who is Jesus? What is he teaching? What does this mean for me? How did his audience take what he heard? You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where we just read it and saturate our minds with it over and over and over again. Not mm -hmm. saying that we can't read other books. Not saying that at all. I think mm -hmm. that's actually good to read other books. It's right. good to read books. Mm -hmm. Just saying, just to be immersed in God's word. Listen to it in the car. Read it. You know, whatever it may be. But just get so comfortable and familiar with it because our hearts need have to change. And if for for us to become more like Christ, we got to know who Christ is. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, and I think that's a great point to kind of end on too is thinking about. But even if you take that, I know you're talking about John one through five. But even if we think of, obviously the main. I mean, the main point of the Bible is Jesus, right? Jesus is coming. Jesus is here. Jesus <laughs> is coming again, right? And, and but if you if you read, no matter where you're reading, I feel like there's like a couple questions you can ask. One, what does this tell me about Jesus? How does this point to Jesus? What does this tell me about him? If you're reading the Gospels. How does this point back to Jesus if you're reading one of the epistles? Um, but also, you know, what, is the, what does this tell me about God? And, you know, and then what does this tell me about myself, right? Like, what do I personally, how do I see Jesus here? What does this tell me about the character of God if he's deciding to reveal this specific detail or this verse or this commandment or whatever it is, if he's deciding to reveal this to me? And then what does this tell me about myself or how do I, how do I apply this better? How do I live this better? What does this even mean for me? Does this even apply to me? How does it apply to me? Uh, and, and I think, you know, a big point of, of this sermon and of what everything that you've said and everything that we've talked about, obviously you've got to read your Bible um, because you've got to apply it somehow, right? You've got to live it. You've got to know it. And if you don't, if you never, read it you never spend time with it then it's it's not going to help you right it's not you know if it's not if it's not in in your heart if it's not in your head um then then it it can't help you right if you have a first aid kit and you need it and you just leave it on the wall that doesn't do anything for you that's not going to save you at all so um you just got to keep reading right <laughs> that's right that's right we got to be readers of the book students of the book and uh that that's that's uh that's time well spent mm -hmm. so thank you for those thoughts miles maybe if there's someone listening maybe you need some kind of bible planner or schedule that's that's okay too right mm -hmm. and so we have ones that we can share with you here at the west main church of christ um and if you are interested in in learning to read the Bible, we have one of our sisters here, Jane Ellen. She has a Bible reading every week where she lives, and mm -hmm. it pays great dividends just reading through the text. Mm -hmm. We want to encourage you to read your Bible, and we have Bible classes on Wednesdays at seven, worship services, um, Bible classes on Sunday at nine, and worship begins at ten. And this week we're going to talk about seeing through the blur. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of things that are taught. And many of the things that are taught can be true, but some things are not. And so things sometimes get a little bit blurry about what we should believe and do. How do we distinguish that? How do we see through the blur? I'll give you a hint. I'll give you the answer. You got to know your Bible. Right. <laughs> you got to read your Bible. Mm -hmm. Now, there will be more to the sermon than that, but you have to know the truth. And so until next time, thank you, Miles. Take care and God bless. Thank you so much for listening to the After the Amen podcast. We hope and pray that all is well with you. Maybe you are interested in a Bible study, learning more about the truth. We would love to study God's word with you. Or maybe you're looking to worship with us at the West Main Church of Christ. You can find all details and you can reach out to us by going to our website, westmaincoc.com. That's westmaincoc.com. Take care. God bless.